I can't tell you how excited I am. All new episodes are going to be available today. That's from the series Queen Charlotte, a Bridgerton story. Had to be, I've been hooked on this story for the past two seasons. Yeah. I see myself in that time period. Is Doing right? what? Just being nobility. <laughs> you know, just riding around the countryside. Okay. You know, choosing women of my choice. Oh, God. Because wow. of my royal bloodline. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I can see myself in there. Um, today, we are honored to have the writer, the creator, the executive producer of this series. But not only that, I mean, if you're a fan of Grey's Anatomy, ra- round of applause as I name these series. I'm off the map, private practice. These are all series that I was hooked on naturally uh-huh. that really challenged my intellect and kept me interested oh, yeah. for a long period of time. Scandal. Come on. Round of applause for that. <laughs> We've had every star of Scandal on this show. Everyone. Yep. Every, every principal. Every yep. principal yep. star of Scandal has been on this show. Um, How to Get Away with Murder. Ooh, We've Viola. had them on here too. Viola's been here a couple times. Let them know. She knows us by first name. Uh, for the People. Um, Station 19, mm. Inventing Anna. That's one of your favorites. Oh, my gosh. We unpacked the hell of that on air. <laughs> so good. Okay. And Bridgerton is one of my favorites. We have the screenwriter, the producer, the author herself. Uh, the one and only Shonda Rhimes is joining us this Woo! morning. We are wow. very yeah. fortunate. Yeah. It's Shonda Land up in here. Yes. Shonda Land. Man. Yes. Happy to have you, Shonda. How do you even find time to be here with us this morning? I don't even know how you do it. Oh, I wanted to come here. Yeah. This is a specific one, yeah. Okay, great. Wow. I'm, I'm glad Thank to have you. you. Glad to have you. Um, it's, um, it's, it's good to have the series back. I'll be remiss if I didn't ask you about what's going on in Hollywood right now, because when I think about uh, who you are and what you do as an executive producer, when I think about Shonda Land, but also as a writer, what you've been able to do, we have this writer strike that's yes. happening. Mm-hmm. And then for you, you're on both sides of the coin kind of writer i consider myself a writer we're okay. a writer driven company you know i'm telling my team not to cross the picket line you know it's not great that we have to strike but if we have to strike to get other writers a livable wage then we should be striking so mm-hmm. okay. i'm okay with it so you're striking right now you're on strike right I, now I, I am on strike right now That's shonda crazy. rhymes is rocking wow. for the people with the people what, what are wow. the writers asking for is just more pay for streaming services or what exactly well, you know, the pay's been like the pay that they get for streaming services is, is turns out to be less than the pay you get on n- network television because you're making less episodes. You have to go from job to job. Sometimes they hire you for just four weeks to come in and like sit in a room. Mm. It's not like on network television where you are employed for the year. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's just a different thing. And so people really aren't making a livable wage anymore. And the streaming system has to sort of bend and accommodate that and figure it out. Okay, I'm for the writers. Yeah, All right, yeah, absolutely. We, we're rocking for the writers. No stories without writers. You you wrote a book uh, speaking that you speaking of being a writer. Year of Yes, um, how to dance it out, stand in the sun, <laughs> and be your own person. And I'm curious. And that was back in 2015. I want to yeah, say yeah. 2015. And um, I got a chance to read through uh, that book, but someone else brought it to my attention last night. And I was talking to someone about you, and, and we we came to this question: um, How do you use or how are you saying yes today, and how has saying yes impacted your life? First of all, saying yes in general when I started that project, because I spent a year saying yes to everything. Right. Um, it changed me entirely. Mm-hmm. I stopped being as shy as I was. I was very afraid to be in public. I was, I was not sort of conscious of my body. Like all these things that weren't happening because I was just stuck in a rut of saying no to everything. Mm-hmm. So. I started saying yes, and really it was a transformative year. Mm -hmm. And now I don't say yes to a lot of things now, but I'm saying yes to this. You know, I'm saying yes to being in the city, which I love, Mm -hmm. which is a lot. It's very different. I've just Mm -hmm. changed my life. Uh, You've done a a lot of transformation, even with your physical body Mm -hmm. over the years, too. Uh, Can you talk about that process? How did you come? How did you get there? And how has it been since? Well, part of Year of Yes was me sort of discovering how uncomfortable I was. I, you know, it, It's one thing that people don't talk about or think about, but it's exhausting carrying that much weight around. Mm-hmm. It really is. And I don't even think I realized how exhausting it was. So making the choice to sort of try and change that. And, you know, I'm for everybody having the body they want, mm-hmm. you know, but I was uncomfortable. So making the choice to change that was a big deal in my life. It was really hard. I'm always going to want to eat fried chicken. That's not going to change. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm not that person. So for me, it was about figuring out how many times I could eat the fried chicken right. and things like that. And it, it's been really freeing. I'm 
I'm playing tennis now. I'm mm-hmm. playing, you know, I'm doing a lot more athletic things. Okay. Because I, I asked this question because Heather and I, uh, we're doing something called a Metflex Challenge right now. And Ooh. for the next six weeks, uh, we're doing it with Dr. Ian Smith. Mm-hmm. And, and after the end of six weeks, whoever lost the most, what is it, lost? Low, the most percentage, not pounds. Of a body weight uh, mm-hmm. wins $250. 750 All together. <laughs> I'm about my right. business first, y'all. <laughs> Don't skip on the money. Don't skip on the money. <laughs> uh, any, any tips you want to give us? Because it's been difficult. I just had two bag of chips. So what oh, do you think? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <swear. laughs> Kalani got them. Oh, he's going to blame it. You got to quit your year of yes. <laughs> you I know, need right? a year of no. He asked. I said yes. You oh, know. you got him. <laughs> Drink as much water as possible all day long. Yeah. It will save you. Okay. Because most of the time when you think you're hungry, you're really thirsty. Mm. That's my mm-hmm. tip. Damn, that's game right there. Yeah. Okay. Hydration's your friend. Shonda Rhimes is here. Um, Shonda Land is um, an incredible concept, right? Mm. Was it always a dream of yours to create Shonda Land, or when did it come to fruition? You know, I used to sort of walk around saying, I want to take over the world through television. And it was a joke at first. And at some point, it started to feel like, I, you know, if I work really hard, something's going to happen. And when I got a chance to have a company, to call it Shondaland. I mean, it was working at Disney, so they have Disneyland. I was mm-hmm. like, well, this is going to be Shondaland, very specifically, oh, yeah. like, our brand. And I don't think I ever expected it to get to where it is right now. Mm-hmm. What was the first project that you did was under Shondaland? Oh, no, Grey's Anatomy was my first project That was the first? Yeah. Okay. Wow, Grey's in that damn. Amazing. She hit a homer from out the box. (laughs) Shonda, thank you so much for being here. I'm so excited to meet you. Um, I don't think you, well, maybe you do know. um, For someone like me, I I did not have an example of what I wanted to do until I actually saw you. Oh, wow. I'm very familiar with Deborah Martin. I'm familiar Mm -hmm. with women who produce shows and EP and showrunners behind the scenes, but it was when I saw you, I was like, that's it. It's possible. Wow. You, it's it's very possible. I, um, I always had a lot of ideas. I love television. And when I saw you and I watched you speak, uh, I watched how you carried yourself, not knowing, you know, what yeah. you just shared with us about weight. That wasn't even a thing for me. For me, it was more like she looks like family. Oh, she looks like, you, you know, our village. And so I, I'm just so psyched to meet you today. And I'm so thankful that you're here. When you walked in, I went to hug you and you said, oh, wow. I was like, well, wasn't I supposed to hug her? But it was just out of love. <laughs> like, just thank you so much for everything. Thank you. And I was happy to hug you. I always, I was excited by who you are. I was like, I'm actually sitting here. Don't, oh, you don't know how to be? Yes. Oh, man, you about oh. to get a part in Bridgerton. I see how this going on. All right. Oh, my God. You it's just, of course, it's ready. <laughs> you just made my day. No, seriously. I was excited. I was like, oh, my God, she's sitting right there. That was. Well, that's, I'm like, she's standing right here. I got to <laughs> hug you. It wasn't, like, I just couldn't, high wasn't enough for you. Oh, it's just not thank enough. You. Thank you for everything. Oh, I appreciate that so much. That's amazing. Mm, I mirror everything that Heather just said. And I also, what comes to mind, Shonda, is many different leaders in Hollywood who are black, right? Most of the time they're known for creating very blackity black projects. Yeah. <laughs> and I was thinking about how we've been seeing some of our leading ladies and men in front of the camera, such as Ania Long say, I don't want to be looked at as just a black actor or just be doing a genre of black film. I'm an actress, I'm a thespian who happens to be black, I'm still multidimensional. And for so many of your projects, Shonda, like, you've had these multi-layered characters who happen to be black. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you don't shy away from race, but it isn't always central to the story that you're telling. Has that been on purpose? That's definitely been on purpose. You know, if you notice in a show, if it's uh, sort of a a mainstream show, and there's one person of color, that's all their storyline is allowed to be. Mm -hmm. Like They talk about being black and how it feels. Like That's all they get to be. They don't Mm -hmm. get to be anything else. And so on shows in which it, it has an all black cast, sometimes that's also the subject. You know, but I think that that has allowed for so many years people to have more multidimensional roles and characters and spaces to work. Mm -hmm. For me, I really wanted to be able to tell the story I wanted to tell. I wanted the world to look like the world I knew around Mm -hmm. me. And I wasn't interested in doing anything where I couldn't see myself or I couldn't reflect somebody else. Shonda Rhimes, man. Boom. She she answered questions and it's... She says period without saying it. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> oh my, my gosh. Um, 
Bridgerton gives me that same vibe too. Mm-hmm. You know, that's what I love about it. You see, it, you see royals of all hues mm. in that. And I'm I'm curious to when you pitched the idea of Bridgerton. Did, how did you pitch it? Was it about that having these um, the historical fiction mis- mixed with the now day themes and the royals just didn't have any particular hue? You know, I I don't pitch anymore, so I'm in the, oh, like a so great my space. Bad. About my that. bad. I'm sorry. No, no. I'm sorry, Sean. Right. 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 Pardon your question. <laughs> Excuse me. No, sorry, but no, no, you little no. peasant. <laughs> we did go in. We did go in, sort of looking at the world and thinking, how can we, how can we populate this world in a way that feels true and very conscious, like it's not that, people call it colorblind casting, we don't do colorblind casting, we do color conscious casting. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to find a way to really do that, and really the idea of starting with the queen came from, you know, there's rumors that Queen Charlotte was of um, Moorish descent, mm-hmm. and I was like, let's take that and run with it, and then we can build the world however we want. Mm. I love it, and you got um, Golda Rushevelle. Golda Rushevelle, yes. Woo, woo, she, give her a round of applause, yeah. man. She's amazing. Oh, God. She's I get amazing. nervous looking at her on the screen. <laughs> She's you know? a wonderful person, but she is an actress. When huh. she puts that corset on, she is a whole other person. Okay. How often, Shonda, when you're writing, do you already have your actors in mind versus like, okay, let's throw out a casting call for anyone? You know, I like to work, and I've learned this over the years, I like to work with newer people mm-hmm. um, because it's exciting to give somebody an opportunity, but it's also... Um, a way to sort of have them come in to a place that's already established and be taken care of. Mm. So for me, I don't usually ever have an actor in mind. I really just write the parts and then what's exciting to me is actors come in and to me that adds to the part. I'll see like India who plays young Queen Charlotte Mm -hmm. do something and I'll think, oh, she's amazing, she carries this and that sort of gets added into what I'm writing. Wow. How did you know for Scandal that Carrie Washington would be Olivia Pope? Oh wow. We... That was a hard one because it yeah. was the first black female leading a drama in 37 years, which I hadn't known, but 37 years. Mm-hmm. And That's so crazy. I really felt like this is a real chance for people. So any actress of color of note who wanted to come in, we had them in. And it was a, it was like a murderer's row of amazing, amazing actresses. And so it, that was really hard to see, to think like all of these women should be given this chance. They were all leading ladies. But Carrie came in and... First of all, she came in talking politics like nobody had ever known. Oh, did she? Yeah. She's so was she, intelligent. Was she in yeah. character or, or she was just no, talking politics? she was just so, talking politics. Okay. And so we had this long conversation about politics. She's an amazing actor. We knew she was an amazing actor. I um, really took some time, and you know, because you want to be careful about these things. But she's perfect. Mm-hmm. And we had we just clicked right away. Mm-hmm. We, we've had Viola Davis here, too, um, who played Annalise Keaton in um, How to Get Away with Murder. Mm-hmm. Uh, that she had to audition for that? No, that's Viola Davis. Oh, okay, right, yeah, that's different. Like, we so. right. That's different. That's like Lady Viola Davis. Yeah, we don't do like, that. Okay, <laughs> okay, that's like you having the pitch. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah I Basically, get it. I get it. what happened there was we got on the phone and begged. I'm not kidding. We were, I was like, what do you need to do this? Like, how can we make this work for you? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, wait, if you incredible. don't mind, I want to jump in because we were talking about supporting women right now, and I am a part of the Critics' Choice Association. That's right. Oh, you and better throw that title out there, DB. Yesterday, I got this email that says <laughs> Queen Charlotte, a Bridgerton story, earns the Critics' Choice Association seal of female empowerment and entertainment. So, wow. I wanted to tell you that. And I also wanted to ask about um, the Bechtel test because some people may have not heard of it. What it means is um, the Bechtel test was named after Alison Bechtel, who was a cartoonist. And what it means is two women in the scene have to talk about something other than a man. And sometimes it requires that the women be named. With something like that in place that most people don't know about, yeah. it's like it's a requirement or, or whatever, but it's like you, you still have these issues and challenges with getting women in representation. So what, how do we get over that hurdle? You know, I, I'm always amazed that every story sort of surrounds a man and that you have to tell <laughs> stories. And when the women are alone, it's usually male writers, you know, no offense to anybody here. But when you get two women alone, suddenly all they're talking about is the man. Right. That's very, we don't talk and sit around just talking about men. That's not our thing. I mean, we, sometimes we do, but most times, no. We have other business to attend to. Okay. Word. Okay. So, yeah, for me, it's really getting more female writers out there, too. Mm. Mm. All right. I don't want to even ask the next question. Don't. Go ahead. <laughs> Pass the mic. You know, going back to um, Scandal and reflecting on that time, my gosh, that was, I think, the first show where Twitter came as a family mm-hmm. to watch it together. Yeah. And it was so electric online. And now I wonder, like, how much of these kind of... Um, 
Folks who will go on Twitter and be like, I wish that this could be the way a scene ends or the story could go mm-hmm. in this direction. Like, how much do you use Twitter, any form of social media, as kind of a brainstorm for how to develop episodes? I don't. Okay. And I had to figure that out early on because we'd have people who, even in the beginning, it was emails and letters saying, like, I'm never going to watch Grey's Anatomy again because this this thing happened. And the next week they'd be like, I'm still never going to watch it again. <laughs> <laughs> but, but what was important about that was, like, my duty, my only job, and I think about this a lot, is to be the keeper of the story. So mm. it doesn't matter what's happening in the outside world. It doesn't matter what everybody else is thinking. It doesn't even matter what's going on with the actors sometimes. Mm. I have to stay true to the story. I have to find a way to stay true to the story. Mm-hmm. Do you know the whole story from the moment that you concept it? No, no. Okay. I'd, I knew the first season of Scandal when we, we started. I knew what that was going to be like. But, I mean, we ended that first season saying, you know, who is Quinn Perkins? And I didn't even know who Quinn Perkins was. <laughs> so you learn that stuff. Wow, this is interesting. Yeah. I, I saw you once um, when you got inducted to a, into the Television Hall of Fame, right? I mean, uh, congratulations. That's Woo! a, Thank that's you. a Thank stunt right there. And Oprah Winfrey yeah. is the one who in, inducted you. And you said that's the moment you felt like, okay, I made it, right? Yep. Okay. So what was the moment you, when you look back, when you reflect back, what do you think prior to Grey's Anatomy, what was your first big break? What'd you say? Oh, I got a job um, working on introducing Dorothy Dandridge mm-hmm. um, oh, wow. as a writer. Mm-hmm. And that was my first real job. I'd been pitching, I'd been trying. And so I got to write that. And then Halle Berry won an Emmy, which was amazing to me. Mm-hmm. It was a great experience. Oh. Uh, you worked with Denzel's company at one point? I was an intern at um, Denzel Washington's company and worked with Deborah Martin Chase. Yeah. Okay. Wow. The well, Denzel didn't walk in the room ever? <laughs> no. <he never> did. <laughs> <laughs> How much television did you actually grow up watching? I was late today for work, Shonda, and so just so happened, God is so good because as I turned the corner, Henry Winkler was oh, standing wow. near the Fonz, <laughs> and so he escorted me in today to distract the fact that I was late. And But it was a moment for me, too, that I was just like, this is the Fonz. This is so cool. But that memory immediately came to me and we had a whole discussion this morning about television and growing up watching the happy mm-hmm. days of Vernon. Did you watch a lot of television to make you want to do television? You know what's crazy is I didn't. My parents are bless their hearts, big old nerds. And so <laughs> there was a lot of like playing chess in my house and reading books quietly in my house, but there was not a lot of television. Wow. I mean, we did we watched Good Times. I remember that. We watched okay. Good Times. Of course. That was serious. Right. That was for um, real. And that was exciting to me. I was like, oh look at these people. But then for a while, there was not a lot of television going on. And then I reached high school and I started to try to you know, watch some things on my own. And I started watching, you know, like a little HBO, Whoopi Goldberg was on Broadway right. and mm-hmm. doing that play. But it wasn't until I had a baby, I became a mom, that, you know, when you have a baby, you can't go anywhere, right. I discovered. So <laughs> <laughs> you don't get to go nowhere. So I spent a lot of days laying on my sofa with my baby on my chest, like watching TV. Oh, wow. And it was amazing to me because it was very different by then. I was like, this is where all the character development's happening. Huh. You know, movies were great, but you had to transform them in you know an hour and 45 minutes and that was it. And then you could never, you never really talk to them again. For me, it was exciting that I could spend you know 24 episodes with Meredith and Christina mm-hmm. and like build a whole world for them. Mm-hmm. Wow. wow, that's wow. beautiful. Shonda Rhimes yeah. is here. I'm gonna uh, take some phone calls. 888-742-3345. Six new episodes of uh, Queen Charlotte, a Bridgerton story is today. So you don't know the ending yet, but what what can you tell us? I was mentioning it off mic that I love the, the musical component of this series because it's a period piece, but you might hear, you know, music that's today. Oh yeah. Replayed. How do y'all select what songs to play towards with scenes? Very purposely, I okay. st- I wanted us to use music of all the black divas. Like I okay. wanted us to find that for Queen Charlotte specifically. Okay. So you know, the first episode we use Beyonce's Halo, and it's mm-hmm. done in a classical form, and it's really beautiful. Alicia Keys came mm-hmm. to us and reimagined her song "If I Ain't Got You" with a and did it with a, an orchestra of seventy women of color. Like wow. it was amazing from all over the world. Wow. Yeah, and it was really moving for them too because they had all been used to being the only person. Mm-hmm. You know? wow. So Alicia came and they were tearful and it was amazing. And she rearranged the, the, she did a new arrangement of the music. I'm not a musician, so I don't know mm-hmm. if I'm saying it wrong. And it was gorgeous. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. it's amazing. And that's in the show. That's in the show. What about the storyline? What can you tell us? Oh. Without giving up too much. So Queen Charlotte is um, 
17 years old, mm -hmm. when her brother signs her off to marry the King of England. And she's in a country where she, you know, she was a princess herself, so she's like, what's happening to me? Mm -hmm. And then she gets there and realizes that she doesn't look like anybody else. You know, there's that moment. And it's really about her coming to terms with who she is, stepping into being a queen, um, and her rise to power, like her real understanding that her power means something. Mm -hmm. And it's also a love story with mm -hmm. lots of sex, but it, hey. it, it's good. Yeah, those, it's a lot of naked, <laughs> naked people. <laughs> So I'm not ready for the role yet, Shonda. Exactly. If you're thinking yeah. about me, give me some time. I'm still, little little time. Little I'm still on the Netflix because challenge. Because bloodline. <laughs> <laughs> Belly line. Come on, you're going to do this in front of Shonda. Oh, sorry, Shonda. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Shonda Rhimes. It's 888-742-3345. K Ford is on the line from Texas. What's up, K? K hey, Ford, hey. hey. What's up, y'all? Man, up? I called before. Remember, I'm the guy that told you, uh, you remind me of Tom John. You are Tom John, and then you went to the Hall of Fame. I'm a super citizen. But Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. That's a compliment. Uh, Thank you. You have mm -hmm. a question for Shonda? Uh, yes. Uh, I'm trying to find a, a, a writer to help me write a script. My uncle is a well-known cowboy, and I'm trying to write a script and a documentary. I'm having trouble. I'm back trucking. You know, I just got out of my divorce. I'm back trucking. I'm trying to see where can I go to find a good editor or script writer. Okay. Oh, how do you do that? That's hard. What I love is that there's talent everywhere, mm -hmm. and there are all these people who have been undiscovered and unrecognized and haven't yet had their chance. So, there, I mean, you can find, like, there are groups online of writers. There are, in Austin especially, there's a community of creative people that you can sort of entertain and go, go and see how they can do. But honestly, I feel like it, opportunities are everywhere. Opportunities are everywhere, K K4. Congratulations to you, man. All right, mm -hmm. you're a citizen, bro. A sway in the morning. You got that from Shonda Rhimes. <laughs> she doesn't pitch. Uh, Leah's on the line. <laughs> what up, Leah? Leah, what's hey, up? Leah. Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. Good Philadelphia, morning. Philadelphia, what um, up, Leah? Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, perfect. So, good morning, everyone. Shonda, so I just wanted to ask you a question and uh, Sway kind of took my question, so I'll just rephrase it differently. So you mentioned in the Scandal Rewatch podcast that your top three choices to play Olivia, Carol, and Pope was Kerry Washington, Anika Noni Rose, and Jill Scott. So I'm wondering, knowing that the chemistry between Kerry and Tony was undeniable, do you think that the chemistry would have been as palpable or believable if Anika or Jill was Olivia Pope? That's a really good question. They're both amazing actresses. But what happens for me when I cast somebody is, and I think I said a little bit about this before, I cast somebody and that adds or changes what I'm writing in the script. Mm -hmm. You know, the show would have been very clearly three different shows with each one of those actresses. Mm -hmm. And I was excited about all the versions. Mm -hmm. Carrie and Tony's chemistry is, I mean, I, you don't ever see that. Yeah. That doesn't happen. So for me, that was like lightning in a bottle. You don't get that kind of chemistry mm -hmm. going on from their very first moment filming together. Great question, well, Leah. Yeah. All right, you're a citizen, well, okay? in the morning. We got Anthony. Uh, hold on one second, Ann. We're going to go with Mike in North Carolina. Mike, go for it. Mike, Mike. Hey, Mike, Mike. Hey, congratulations on your success. Thank you. <laughs> hey, um, I'm filming a, a real, it's like a reality Siri, home improvement, something that's never really been done before. And my question is to you, how do I get it on, how do I get it like to the film festivals where the people can see it? Because it's different, it's home improvement, black dude running the company over a lot of white people, so it's Oops. definitely different. <laughs> well, all right. All right. So, Sounds like a winner to me. First of all, congratulations to you. <laughs> 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 But second, honestly, you go to TV festivals. You look at TV festivals and see what there are. There are very specific TV festivals everywhere. I don't know a lot about unscripted programming, but I do know that like that's the space to get into it, and that there's a lot of filming possibilities in the South. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a real hotbed of where they're filming a lot of reality television. Mm -hmm. mm. Shonda Rhimes, y'all, uh, give her a big round of applause. Yes. There's a movie called I'm going to say Chevalier. Are you familiar with it? Mm -mm. Uh, it's, it, 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 it reminds me of what you've done with Queen Charlotte. I feel like, uh, uh, Bridgerton's story, uh, I feel like you've opened the doors for a lot of other folks to uh, create in the way that you have. 
that show these time pieces and, and show the diversity in these time pieces as well. Mm-hmm. So I want to say congratulations to you yes. and then on all your success that you've had. Thank you. And uh, continued success to you, Shonda Rhimes. I know you have to go, but I wish you could stay. <laughs> I wish I could stay yeah. too. Okay, yeah. you had a good time? I had a really good time. Okay, Thank cool, you. man. Yeah. We did. I made it. You made it. Yes, we, <laughs> made it. we made it. Okay, this is our Oprah moment. Um, <laughs> don't forget Queen Charlotte, a Bridgerton story is streaming today on Netflix. Six new episodes. I'll be home binge watching it tonight. Give it up for Shonda Rhimes, okay? Thank you. Congratulations. All right, we're coming right back. Sway the morning, Shade 4-5.